My company is Black Hills Untangled. Um, the reason I came up with the name Untangled is um, untangle your home, untangle your mind. So when you're thinking about organizing or cleaning out your home, um, it's also going to be cleaning out your mind, getting things off of your shoulders. So oh, that project room, that junk drawer, whatever it is that you've been wanting to work on, um, this is going to help you, um, especially with uh, that junk drawer, anything like that. So um, I start with organizing. I have always been a, uh, an organizer, even as a kid. I remember um, cleaning everything off, dressers, dusting, and then organizing my little Disney characters <laughs> from the tallest in the back to the shortest in the front. So it's kind of been ingrained in me. Um, however, uh, there are, we all have our own story. So our own influences um, as we've um, grown up. So my grandparents, you know, grew up in the, the Great Depression and they held on to everything. My grandma recently um, at 96 years old moved in with my mom and she still has a four drawer metal filing cabinet that she has moved with her everywhere. It has paperwork from who knows what. Um, it's kind of like the secret safe for her, but she has never been able to let go of that. She still has quite a bit of stuff. She's purged over, the, over time because she's had a downsize, um, but that's also been passed on to my mom. She actually holds on to quite a bit of stuff and I'll get into the story and how I have helped her with some organizing in the past year and going through things and really um, getting stuff off of her mind and off of her shoulders that she didn't even know was there. So where do I start? That's the question that a lot of people have. Um, the pictures that show on here, the left side is a storage room actually from um, my mom's house, which she's not on this, thank goodness, but um, it's just an accumulation of so many years of stuff. She's been in the same house for um, over 40 years. So she has Christmas decor, she has Easter, Halloween, stuff from when we were kids. Um, it all adds up, especially if you have been in a house that long. Um, she also has Christmas sets, um, red and green, maroon and silver, blue and silver. There is actually a set um, for her entire house for each one of those colors. So she can do a different theme each year. So there's quite a bit of stuff in that storage room. The one on the right was actually um, a client's house that I organized in the last six months. Um, and she honestly was just too busy to um, put stuff away to even start to get organized. She didn't know where to begin. She has a little bit of everything. There's stuff that could have been um, put in a garage or there's recycling sitting out. So I just want to take you through some steps that will help you to start this process and hopefully get you motivated to do one room, maybe start with a closet, um, then continue with the room, continue with the next room. Um, and get yourself organized. We're all spending a lot more time at home right now. So staring at those projects, um, I'm sure is weighing a little bit on your mind. Okay, so one idea that I usually have is when I start a project, am I ready to move? If you walk into a guest room or your project room, do you wanna pack all the stuff that's in that room? Do you wanna keep all the stuff that's in that room? Or are you ready to let go of some of those items? If you're not ready to let go, if this gives you a panic attack, you don't, you hate moving, you don't wanna go through things, I will take you through the steps. Um, but these are the categories that we usually do, uh, keeping things, donating things, or maybe it just simply needs to go in the trash. So we're gonna start small. I recommend um, starting with a drawer or a closet um, just to get you started on the steps. Even a cupboard is easy. Um, so the first thing we'll take into, um, we'll start with a closet, a coat closet. So you want to take everything out of the closet. I know that's already a big step, but you're going to group similar items. So we have the seasonal coats, the coats you wear every day, the jackets, the boots, 
the umbrellas, the hats, all of these things, all of this, you're going to group the similar items. Um, I do want you to be prepared for the random pile. And the random pile just becomes a pile of stuff. You're not sure what to do with. It doesn't go to in with any other group like boots or coats. Um, actually, as I was walking around my home picking up today, I found a little pile of beads and then some cut up paper. It's just the random things you don't have a spot for quite yet. But just beware, it's going to happen. Um, it happens to me every time I organize something, so. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is to categorize items. So you either love it, you um, are ready to donate, you're going to store it, or it's simply going to go into the trash. So to start with, love it. Do you love it? Does this item have sentimental value? So we'll take, for instance, a coat. So you have this green coat, you absolutely love it. Um, you wear it almost every day. That's great, you wanna keep that. Um, what about a ceramic vase that's sitting in that coat closet? Do you have sentimental value to it? Is that why it's sitting in that room or in that closet? Do you wanna put it out for display? Do you actually use it? Um, is it daily, is it occasionally? So basically you just wanna know why are you keeping these things? Do you use them? Do you love them? And if you don't, we'll go on to the next step. So you know that feeling when you walk into a department store or you know the Home Depot and you find that tool, you find that those shoes that you absolutely love. Somebody else is going to love your item if you don't. So you can always think about doing a donation to a women's shelter. You can do the research for what places are available and accepting items. Um, I know that the Habitat for Humanity takes um, leftover pieces from projects, um, from home remodeling. So um, those are just some ideas. But if you don't love this item and you're ready to get rid of it or you're not ready to get rid of it, think about how much somebody else might really love it and use it. store it so if you love it you can't bear to part with it you won't um, necessarily set it out for anybody to look at um i have a container theory so if you start with one container maybe two since this is your first organizing project possibly um those containers are going to be the special containers so if you have something that means a lot to you you don't necessarily want to put it out on a shelf it doesn't need to be hung in a closet um, for instance, uh, my husband's letter jacket from high school, we're not going to part with that, but it doesn't necessarily need to be in the coat closet taking up space. So we can go ahead and put that in a container and keep it in um, storage. And that is completely fine. Nobody is going to make you get rid of anything, but it's just the process of thinking about what you can do. You love it, you're going to keep it you're going to donate it or we're going to store it because you can't bear to part with it. And that's completely fine. I have a container myself um, with some special items. I think I started with four at one time. So over, over a period of time, I've gone through things and have um, gotten it down to one, which is progress for me as well. Um, the last part is trash. So if you go through your tea, um, like if you have a tea drawer or a tea cupboard, that kind of thing, uh, instead of just tossing all of the boxes out, we can definitely reuse items. So as you're going through things, if there are just scraps of paper that are gonna go in recycle or trash, however you do that, um, think about if the item can be repurposed. And it's mostly like baskets, containers, um, items that can hold, uh, some of your goods. So um, on the right, I have a plastic container. We all have that Tupperware cupboard or drawer that we hate to go through. But once you go through that, if there's not couples, there's a single one that doesn't have a lid, um, which is always confusing to me, but I always find that um, piece of Tupperware, I either have just the lid or just the 
actual container. It's like the sock theory. It goes into the dishwasher, it goes into the washing machine, and then you come out with one. I don't understand how that happens. It's just a mystery to me. But um, so anyway, that is one of the Tupperware pieces that I had left over and it came in handy a little bit later on, you'll see. Check in with yourself through this process. Um, organizing isn't just simply cleaning or um, getting rid of stuff. It's actually going through a process. Why have you held on to things? Why um, do you feel it's time to actually start organizing? Why is it hard to throw anything away or to donate? Just be real with yourself. If this is overwhelming, that's why I ask you to just start small. Because if you start with an entire room and you get overwhelmed quickly, then it's just going to be a mess because you pulled everything out and then you're going to dread going back into that room. So start small so you don't overwhelm yourself and just validate, be, be real with your emotions and um, take a break if you need to. Um, and you can always reach out to me as well. Um, and I will give you my contact information at the end for that. So another, the next step, so we've gone to, um, from separating things out, then we have categorized, now we are going to simplify. Simplifying is a very important piece to organizing because this is where it's going to make it easier to keep organized. So you're going to, for instance, take the um, uh, skin care products and the hair care products um, that you use daily. You're going to put those where they are easily accessible daily. If you look at the top right photo that I have on this slide, it actually has items that are in a Tupperware container, and that is the one I showed on a few slides back. Um, those are the items that I don't need to particularly use every day, and this is kind of more an, an example um, because I don't use a dry shampoo every day, okay? So don't judge me there. Um, also on the bottom right, just because this is me, um, I have a basket of hand sanitizer, Kleenex, and lotions because I like to have that all together to make sure I can refill my uh, baby bag, diaper bag, my purse, my car, take things to work. It's all readily available right there. So you want to simplify things to where it's easy to grab and go. If you have a ton of stuff that you're trying to shove back in a cupboard, maybe just think through the process separate everything out, actually look at things and see, do I use this daily? Do I not use this? Why don't I use this? Why can't I get rid of it? Why am I holding on to it? And then simplify. Okay, so here's um, a for instance here. And I do see that there have been some chats or Q and A's. I am going to leave those to the end because it's a little hard to jump back and forth from sharing my screen and um, questions. So, um, as far as, so I did a Tupperware drawer. I cleaned my own out. Um, and because I tend to organize and reorganize, I didn't have that much Tupperware that wasn't, <laughs> that was mismatched. Um, so on the left hand side, I pulled all of it out. On the right hand side, I have grouped similar items. Um, I found one that didn't have a home. So that was the one that went into the bathroom. Um, I've also gone through my tea. So the uh, tea cupboard, the tea drawer, wherever you put that, this can go for coffee or whatever you use in the morning. Um, I actually repurposed some boxes. So um, if you see in the middle of the green tea is actually a uh, business card box that just easily fit things. So um, as much as the HGTV or DIY project show all these colorful, pretty baskets. Um, I'm all about repurposing and saving money. So repurpose, um, write names on things too. So I know where to go to for my sleepy time tea, my pomegranate, my green tea. Um, in the morning, you've simplified the process. You get your tea going and you're out the door. Same thing with the bathroom. 
So on the left hand side, I pulled everything out, all of the hair products, all the skin products, that kind of thing. In the middle, I've categorized things, um, which still looks a little bit messy, so don't judge me there. Um, but I have lotions together, aloe, skin products, that kind of thing. On the right, I have simplified. So the things I use daily are up front and the things I use occasionally are in the back. Simplify your process so it's easier for you to stay organized. Okay, so here's another example. So makeup. Uh, makeup uh, can be overwhelming for some people. So I show a drawer on the left hand side with all sorts of makeup in it. It's kind of all over the place. When you get ready to um, start your day to go to work or to walk out to your living room to work as we are, some of us are doing right now, um, you want to simplify this process. So I took all of the makeup out. I put it into similar groups, mascaras, um, hair ties, that kind of thing. And then I um, separated or I categorized it. So the things that I use um, daily versus the special occasion makeup. So on the top right, you can see um, the daily stuff is a lot less than actually the left hand side top um, with all of the makeup. Um, the bottom left hand side is my special occasion um, bag. So if there is a special event, which I don't see that happening anytime soon, or we can just make it happen. Um, that can just be kind of set aside. It can be put in the back. Um, one, um, I did mention that I do like low cost items. So I am always looking um, for little organizers at TJ Maxx because they usually have the lowest price around. So I do show one of the teal ones in that drawer on the bottom right. Um, I was also at Target the other day and saw this um, end cap and actually the top three rows um, were $2 each and they were sets of two or three containers. Um, the bottom were $5 and they were um, sets as well. So you get two or three containers for that $5. Um, they are colorful, they are pretty, um, and they're inexpensive. So that's perfect. You can find this kind of stuff anywhere. Okay. The visual. Don't be disappointed. Um, you saw my tea cupboard. You, um, it's not always going to be pretty. I think a lot of times we compare ourselves to um, the HGTV or the DIY. It doesn't look pretty with the pretty basket, but really um, just don't compare yourself. Be proud of the items that you have. Um, be proud that you were able to organize it and love your space. Um, at the end, if you have cardboard boxes organizing everything and you're ready to go to the store, then just keep that in mind. Now you know the actual containers that you need and what you're looking for once everything is organized. So um, this is a good example of it not being pretty after you organize something. Again, this is my mom's uh, storage room. I pulled everything out on the left hand side because this is a work in progress. So. Um, I pulled everything out on the left hand side. I put all the Christmas stuff together. I put all the Easter, all the Halloween. Um, everything had, was, it was a complete disaster in her basement um, living room, but um, we separated it all out into the different holidays, the different themes, um, and then we categorized it. And once you actually have all of the Christmas stuff together, all of the Easter stuff together, all of the kids stuff together. You can really take a look at what you have and realize how much more than you thought you had. This happens to everybody. Um, this happens to me every time I organize. So um, at that point, it's easier to get rid of things and donate items um, because somebody else is going to love that item. Or if it's simply been, it's past its prime and it has been used enough, maybe it just needs to be recycled or trashed. So the next one is the project that I worked on for a client in the last six months. Um, we didn't have any special containers. We didn't, it, it's not like a DIY, but it looks great. It was a, a little space. This, she had a smaller kitchen. Um, she had all of this stuff in there. Now, a lot of it had 
gone down to her basement, but it got organized in her basement and was actually put away where it needed to be. The recycling was put away, just different things. Once you have a clear room, it's easier to, you want to keep that clean. You like that feeling. It's like an awe feeling at the end of organizing. So this is her kitchen. Um, and just to show, I, it may not look that different, but it actually, after taking everything out of every cupboard in her kitchen, we separated it out into cooking items, into glasses, into coffee items. Um, and then we categorized, did she need to get rid of anything? Did she want to donate? Um, what can she store that she just has on a shelf? that maybe needs to go somewhere else. Is there anything that's trash? She actually had recently moved into this home and really was so busy that she didn't have time to unpack her items. Um, so some of it was just, she was simply so busy, she just kind of threw things into cupboards as she went. Um, so as you can see, this actually turned into like a snack kind of pantry um, cupboard. Um, the teapots at the top, I absolutely loved, along with that um, mint green box. Um, these kind of treasures I love because you get to, she loves the teapots, I love the teapots, we put them out on display, and made it look really cute in her home. Also, the uh, mint green box is super cute to set out, um, and it'll hold items, um, you know, keys, whatever sets out, because I know we all have like a catch-all kind of basket box that we have sitting out. Um, this was another cupboard of hers. So as you can see on the light on the left, um, she had quite a few things that were on different shelves. On the right, um, it turned out we were able to clear off those shelves, um, put the teapots out on display. She even had a little cute little saying, bless this home. Um, this is where I'm talking about untangle your home, untangle your mind. You, once you're, um, once you have things in order and you've been able to get rid of things, instead of looking at those shelves and knowing, oh my gosh, there's so much stuff up here. I don't know where to put it. You look up there and you know you have items out there that you absolutely love and you've worked on this organizing and the end result is awesome. You can love your space. Okay, again, just another check-in. Um, how are you feeling? Are you overwhelmed? Um, do you feel guilty you've gotten rid of things? Um, are you excited? Are you motivated? Um, just check in with yourself. It's more for, um, it's just, I don't want you to get overwhelmed because this, this happens to people, especially going through memories, pulling things out. Um, just don't, if you start to get overwhelmed, take a break. That's why you start small. I do, and I actually am going to tell the story on um, the gal that I helped with her um, kitchen that I've shown you some photos. Um, I was there, my first visit was for four hours, and that was perfectly fine for me um, because I enjoyed doing it so much. But pulling everything out of her, out of her um, kitchen, um, cupboards, everything, and then going back and organizing. Um, I'd only asked through the process, she was there the entire time. The only um, time that she actually was uh, brought in to help was just questions. Do you drink coffee daily? Do you drink tea daily? Because I wanted to simplify her process when I put things away. Um, there were also some empty containers that I kept and repurposed, but there were also some that um, I thought that we could get rid of, and they were boxes that held um, like a coffee machine she kept the box for, or um, her, I don't know, her microwave, like there were some bigger boxes, but um, I would have just tossed them. After talking to her, she actually keeps all of her boxes. So everybody keeps something different. We all have our own um, story that has brought us to this point. So I found a spot downstairs. We were able to store all of the boxes so that they weren't taking space up in her actual kitchen. But after the four hours, she said she was absolutely exhausted. Like I said, I only asked her a few questions and took care of um, organizing the entire kitchen. But just the process of pulling things out, um, 
organizing and thinking through all of it, she, I realized that moving forward, it would only be two hours at a time if that, um, that I'd be at her house because she was so worn out from the process. Um, I just want to touch base on the random pile again. So the random pile is um, going to be the same thing. So you've put your uh, winter coats, you've separated everything out. You have grouped similar items. Um, you've categorized it. So you have a donate pile. Um, you've simplified. So you have put the stuff that you use daily versus the occasion stuff. Um, but you have a donate pile to go and you have this random pile that you're not sure what to do with. Dive into the random pile just like the others. So you're going to group similar items and if you can't group them, then they are all separate. The next thing you're going to do is honestly look at each thing. Should you trash it? Is it three random beads that don't really have a spot or is there a place that you actually keep beads? Um, is there a reason that you're holding on to 25 nail files? Maybe we could pass those on if they're still unused. Maybe they, some need to be trashed. Um, maybe there is a, a tape measure in there that needs to go out to the garage, different things. So, um, if there is something that you're not sure what to do with, ask yourself, why are you holding on to it? Do you have sentimental value with it? Should it go in your container? Do you honestly want to hold on to it? Or do you think that somebody may actually love this item more than you do? And maybe you should be willing to get rid of that. This goes the same for the project room. The project room, um, and uh, I don't think my cousin's gonna be listening, but she had an entire bedroom of all of the projects she wanted to do. Pine cones for winter decor, um, old antique frames to put um, pictures in or mirrors in, and it's always for that rainy day or um, for the um, pandemic that we didn't know was going to come. But if you have had extra time during this pandemic, and you haven't gotten to those projects, maybe it's time to rethink why you're holding on to them. Um, maybe you need to dive in and see, do, do you love that item? Or will somebody else really love that item? Um, one other thing um, with donating, um, getting rid of items, somebody else is going to love it no matter what. Um, I actually, I do donations, but I also uh, sell items on the side. Um, I have a few different apps that I use for that. Um, but that's quite a process too, and that's probably for another webinar. Um, but when you are working, when you have that pile of donations, make a plan ahead of time. So you know that you're going to take um, one set of items to Habitat for Humanity one set of items to the women's shelter, one set of items to the Salvation Army or the ARC. Um, make a plan and set a time because if you set it in a room and it just sits there, it's another pile that you are going to dread looking at. You're going to um, have to go back to that and reorganize it if you forget what's even in there. Or you're going to start pulling stuff out of that donation pile to put back in your house. So my recommendation is to make a plan of where you're going to take the items and put them in your car. So if you start on a project on Monday and you're going to the grocery store on Friday, um, put the items in your car so that on the way to the grocery store, leave a little extra time, you drop those items off and it's such a good feeling after it's out of your car. You have untangled your home, your mind is clutter free now, um, and then you can just go enjoy that time at the grocery store with your mask on. Um, okay, so back to that question. Are you ready to move? So when you walk in to look in that coat closet, would you take everything? Would you pack everything in there? Or can you donate items or sell items? 
Um, or is it simply been used enough that maybe it just needs to be recycled or trashed? So um, I am going to um, get to the chat. I do see more have been popping up. Um, so start small. Um, be easy on yourself. Be proud of what you've accomplished at the end and love your space. Remember to separate items, categorize the items, whether you keep it, you store it, you donate it, or you trash it, and simplify. So you have the items that you actually use daily and you have the items that you actually use occasionally. All right. I am going to stop the share and look at some chats to see if we have any questions here. All right, so it says, when you simplify and put products you don't use under the sink or in a different spot, do you find yourself a couple months later purging more because you realize you don't use the items enough to justify storing them? This is a good question. Once you have gone through um, your items once and you know how good it feels to just have your life simplified, you have the items up front that you use daily, you have the other items that you use occasionally that are in the back. Yes, I find myself going through things over and over because I think it feels so good to let stuff go and to um, only have the things that actually you, you actually use or that mean something to you. Um, I, I have a problem with going through things too much, but, um, hopefully that answers your question. Um, thank you, Tony. Uh, she says it find she finds it refreshing that you are saying it doesn't have to look like HGTV. I honestly, when people go through things, you should just be proud of exactly what you've done. You have, um, donated or sold things to somebody that absolutely is going to love that item or the items that you are keeping you love, which is going to make you feel happy in your own home, which we're all spending a lot more time in right now. Um, recommendations for starting the process as a family, getting the husband and kids on board. Oh boy. So this is a little bit tough. Um, I know that my husband has different ideas on organizing, but um, it's honestly walking through the process of asking questions. So for, this is a good example actually with my mom. Um, I have wanted to organize her home for quite some time, but she, we either don't have time or she's really been against it because she doesn't like going through things and we have a tendency to get in arguments easily. So um, I didn't want that to happen. Uh, but she actually had a um, knee surgery uh, about a year ago. So I took a week off from work and um, hung out with her to help her with her knee and to organize, which she didn't know it at, the, at that time. Um, but I had the advantage because she couldn't get away too easily with, after that knee surgery. So um, I started with asking simple questions. So if you're actually going to help your family member organize, um, I think that's one of the better ways to go about it rather than just telling them what to do. Um, so I brought, I asked her if we could start with the linen closet. Just a simple linen closet. Stuff was everywhere in that linen closet, falling off the shelves. Um, so I set up a card table. I brought everything out and nothing, barely any of it fit on the card table, um, but she probably had about 25 cream or white tablecloths. Um, like I said, she has all sorts of Christmas, Easter, Halloween um, decor, but she also had the linen closet full of tablecloths for those events. So we pulled them all out, and after she saw, she had 25 um, cream, white tablecloths, um, all together, she realized there's only two or three that she actually was using um, for any occasion. 
She didn't like that she had a round one. She never used that. There's never a round table. There were a couple other ones um, that were kind of a different cream color that she didn't like, but she had held on to. So we were able to actually take an entire truck load of, of items from uh, her linen closet alone because after she saw everything had been pulled out, we separated the similar items. Um, that's when she saw how many she had. Um, and that's going to happen to you too. It happens to all of us. Um, I have a problem with fancy glasses for some reason. Uh, I noticed this more when I was making this presentation and going through my photos. Um, margarita glasses, martini glasses, wine glasses, tumblers. Um, we have a bunch of Yetis and I love all of them. So I don't want to get rid of them. <laughs> But um, it also makes me happy that when I do want to have a cocktail, I have it in a fancy glass. So that's the way it is. Um, but as, walk through the process. Sorry, I kind of went off there. Walk through the process with um, your loved one. So asking my mom why she's holding on to certain things if she's not using them. Um, maybe it needs to be stored in a different place. Um, or honestly thinking about how somebody else will absolutely love those cream tablecloths for their um, next gathering with friends. Hopefully that answers your question. Getting the kids on board is a little bit tricky. I have a two-year-old who um, is pretty good at cleaning up, but the organizing piece obviously hasn't been with her. Um, so I don't really have quite the advice for the kid part quite yet. Any good tips on organizing pots and pans? Um, I see pot and lid organizers on Amazon, um, but not, not sure if it's worth it. Do you ever encourage people to take pictures of items that are special to them, yet they don't necessarily need to keep them around or store them? Then they can keep the picture and get rid of the item. Okay, so we'll start with the pots and pans. Um, that's hard. I mean, you can always look Pinterest and um, different things uh, that are DIY. Um, I love that kind of stuff. I love new ideas on how to organize items. Um, I like to keep things inexpensive, so I don't generally go out and purchase things to um, organize my pots and pans. Although, as I'm thinking about it, I could use some help <laughs> with my pots and pans. I actually have a deep drawer that they go in. Um, that's a tough one. I do actually think that those um, pieces that hold the lids um, or even uh, separate your pans or hang your pans um, are a good purchase, especially if you love cooking and you're always, um, and that's something that you could simplify and have readily available by hanging them up or sitting them out easier. Um, Taking pictures of items, um, that's an interesting question. Um, scrapbooking is a big deal to my mom as well. So taking pictures of items that you could put in a scrapbook maybe, um, or just to look at later, um, I think that's a great idea. If you're ready to let go of something, but you just wanna keep the memory of that, um, I think that's definitely a good idea. Uh, Let's see. All right, another question. How do you balance current usefulness with potential long-term heirlooms? Some stuff I don't care about now, but I may years from now. So a good example of this actually was um, when I was helping my mom with her storage room. There were several boxes of stuff from when I was a child um, when I was a baby, when my brothers were babies, and she kept it all for me. And I felt bad because going through the boxes, really, there wasn't anything that I remembered um, that I could use now or that I would want to pass on to my daughter. I felt bad. I, I did grab a couple things to make my mom feel a little bit better, but honestly, her holding on to that box on the shelf wasn't doing anybody any good. And after I had taken a look at it, she felt fine with getting rid of those items. Um, another story, 
my mom um, has kept napkins, matching napkins, paper napkins, and plates um, for my entire life. And I realized that I don't like napkins for this reason because she has she had so many. But after going through her storage room, I realized there, I, well, I actually found a box of napkins um, that was probably a foot and a half by a foot and a half that were given to her by her dad when he would travel for work. So he would bring a napkin, one single napkin back for her from each place that he would visit. And she held on to that. So that was definitely more of an emotional piece for her. So collecting the colorful um, plates and napkins for all of the occasions um, became a hobby. And because of a, a lifetime of love of getting the napkins. So I had more, I do have more appreciation for her keeping those items. We were able to organize in a tub and I told her that every time I come over, I want to see a new set out because she had so many that, that were available that <laughs> we better start using them. Um, but she still has that box of napkins and it's hard to get rid of. And the guilt that you feel inside of getting rid of them, if that's worse um, than actually just keeping them on your shelf, then just, just do that. But know that um, some of these items that maybe were given to you by your grandma that were passed down, um, your grandmother also wouldn't want your um, things weighing heavy on your shoulders to hold on to. Maybe she would, but if somebody else can enjoy those items more than you are with that on your shelf, then maybe it is time to pass them on. You will always have the memories. And like the question before, maybe you take a photo and then you're able to uh, keep the memory but pass the item on. What do you do with old high school medals and trophies? Do you throw them away? Will someone reuse them? I don't want to shrine to myself and don't really care to have a tote of them. So this is actually a funny question. Um, probably in the last couple of years, I had um, some items in my shed at my parents' house, um, which I have downsized. There's nothing in the shed of mine now, but that's where I kept the containers with the special items. Um, and I ran across all of my childhood little trophies, um, not to say that I placed to get these trophies. They were more of just a handout when you're a kid, but it still meant something to me, um, especially playing softball, my dad, um, was always a coach and he passed away uh, three years ago. So um, holding on to those was like holding on to a memory with him. Um, but really I had photos with the trophies. So I have those photos for the memory um, and those sitting in a container isn't doing me any good. There are places um, that do repurpose trophies for lower income kids that are in um, like intramural sports. So that's something to look through. Um, I have seen uh, medals given away as white elephant gifts around the holidays. So that's something to keep in mind if you wanted to do something like that. But to be perfectly honest, um, somebody may really enjoy those trophies and medals better than you. As long as you have a um, photo of those, you can, you can keep that memory. All right, so I ended a little bit early here, but just want to see if there are any other questions that we have. So to go through um, the steps again, so you are going to tackle that drawer, you're going to tackle that closet or that cupboard. You're going to pull everything out and separate into similar groups. So separate, then you're going to categorize them. Are you gonna keep them? Are they items you love? Are you willing to donate or part with them? Are you going to store them because they still mean something but they don't need to be sitting out? Are you going to trash them or recycle them because it's past their point? Um, 
the next one is the simplify when you put things back in. So the daily, the things that you use daily will go toward the front. The occasional things will go toward the back. And um, then you can move on to the next project. Sometimes when you find little special items um, that may even be in your um, random pile, if things make you happy and you're not sure where to put those, um, you can put those out on display as decor too. Again, it doesn't need to be a HGTV show home, anything like that. Put things out on display that make you happy. Um, I know when I lived alone in a, um, I had a super small apartment. It was probably 500 square feet um, studio that I lived in for almost 10 years. And I had a collection of um, high heels, like stilettos, sparkly ones, um, Oxford ones, like all sorts of different heels. And I rarely wore them, but they made me happy. So I put them out on display. So instead of having books or um, different things, I had some pairs of shoes that were sitting out. Blue sparkly ones made me happy. So why not? Um, and they were brand new. So it wasn't like they were gross and sitting out. But one held my remotes at one point. Um, again, this is a past life. I wouldn't do that now. But um, the things that make you happy sat out in your house. So nobody one thing that i do um, tell people when i actually go into organize their home because there's a lot of anxiety around um, having to get rid of items and i don't force anybody to get rid of items i will talk you through the process to maybe um, help you come to that conclusion yourself but i'm not going to force you to throw things away or donate but we will find a better place for those items so you can stay organized um, you can simplify your life. You can untangle your home so that you untangle your mind. And with that, by simplifying, you get more time back to yourself. So you have happy surroundings, happy things around you. Um, gosh, I sound like Bob Ross, happy trees. Um, uh, but you're um, now organized, you get time back to yourself. So. Um, hopefully this gets people excited and motivated to do some organizing, but um, you can also feel free to reach out to me. Um, my website is blackhillsuntangled.com. I'm also on Instagram, bhuntangled. Um, I do have a Facebook, although I'm not so savvy with Facebook, um, but I'm going to work on that. That's a new challenge for me. So um, I would be more than uh, happy to answer any questions. Um, I also have an email, bhuntangled at gmail.com. Feel free to um, reach out to have a conversation or um, answer any um, questions that you may have. I'm happy to help. I, I hope that you can see through this that I actually love organizing. It's a passion of mine. And I love helping people. So we will end with that. Um, I do want you to know that um, you can you can find the Elevate Rapid Cities Facebook page um, for upcoming webinars. You can find previous web webinars on the Elevate Rapid City YouTube channel. Um, so this one should be recorded and up there um, if you'd like to pass it along to friends. Um, I hope that I am able to help people. I obviously can't go into homes right now to help people organize, but maybe we can do it through phone or video. Um, but I hope you stay healthy and safe and um, take advantage of this time in your home to get your home organized. Untangle your home. Untangle your mind. Thank you.